Matthew's Gospel, chapter number 9. The, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 9. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, how grateful we are for what we've heard already in song. Lord, uh, I thought of Joe Edwards when our choir sang that beautiful song that they shared and that was his song. And then uh, Mark got up and reminded us that we don't need to forget. And we're grateful for that. And so Lord, as we look at your word today, help us to open our eyes that we may be able to see and learn from you. And we'll be careful to give you praise for your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Before I get into reading our text verses of Scripture this morning, I wanted to do something just a little bit different. I want to introduce the message of the hour to you before we read our text verses. Today I want to bring to you a message that God has burned deep into my soul. Because I believe with all of my heart that we're living in a time when it would appear to me, uh, and, and I use that term very heavily as, as I speak of myself, it would appear to me that we're living in a time when there is not much vision. Uh, we're seeing too much of other things. And I want to bring to you a message that I've titled, Vision is Needed. Vision is Needed. Now as I begin to do my best to try to introduce the message to you, I want you to realize that any successful endeavor, whatever it may be, requires for you to have a vision. Now the Scripture says, uh, and Solomon in his writing of the book of Proverbs, Solomon was supposed to be the wisest man that ever lived. And in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18, Solomon said these words. He said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Now the word vision literally means the ability to see things. The ability to see things that are visible. Now we could also use that word to mean or to see other things. Uh, unusual competence it could be uh, de described as. A discernment or the word perception comes to mind, having perception, intellect, or foresight. All of this has to do with vision. Vision also allows us not only to see those things visible, but to know of those things that are invisible. Now, I've never set my eyes on Jesus Christ in the flesh but I have set my eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ in the Spirit. I've never visibly looked at the Lord Jesus, but I've spiritually looked at Him. Amen? Amen. And I've got a good view of what I see that is invisible. The Lord Jesus Christ is not here with us physically today, but He is with us here spiritually today. And so I'm thankful for that. Such ventures of vision is very important, uh, not only in business or politics, uh, but we need to be men and women of vision in our Christian walk uh, as well. Without the ability, listen, without the ability to visualize worthy goals, uh, how in the world can goals be realized? Very little of importance is achieved when we don't visualize a goal. But you gotta set a goal before you can visualize a goal. 
And not many goals are being set in today's world. We need greater goals in our Christian walk. What can be done? Greater objectives. How can it be done? How can it be achieved? Well, I believe that Jesus was a visionary. I believe that He had a vision of doing something. And I think that our text verses of Scripture tell us that. So let's look at these few verses of Scripture real quickly together for just a moment. The Bible says, But when He, the Lord Jesus, saw the multitudes, that He was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. And then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. My friend, as I think about what Jesus is trying to say to us, in those few verses of Scripture, I believe that we need to have visions that are worthy of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords for the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. We need to have vision for what God can do in this place. What can we do to help elevate and enlarge our vision of the Lord's work at the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church? Well, I want to talk to you first of all about those things that are inadequate. The inadequate vision that usually stifle our work. Those things that keep us from really doing what God would have for us to do. Now I want to give you first of all an, uh, an illustration of an inadequate vision. Now suppose a man is driven by a vision of, of making as much money as he can make. Now, I know some of you are looking at me real spiritual right now, and you're saying, well, I knew that Brother Danny would bring something up like making all the money that we could make. Well, I didn't do that by chance, because really and truly that is what people try to do today. We're never satisfied with what God's blessed us with. We're constantly wanting more and more and more and more. Well, now, there are two things that maybe make such a one that is looking for nothing but money. There are two things that keeps him from making the money that, that he might want to make. Number one, he may be limited in his idea of what a lot of money is. What is a lot of money? Don't you like riding up and down the interstates and them signs start flashing? Win the lottery. Win the lottery. And then it's got the millions of dollars that's being flashed up there. And Would a million dollars be plenty of money? Would it? Think about that for just a moment. What is a lot of money? Well, before you can decide that you're going to make a lot of money, you've got to know what a lot of money is. And then secondly, he may never have any or make any specific plans other than just the notion of making as much money as possible. His problem is his vision. And let me just say this. His vision may be too small concerning what can be, what can be done. Or his vision may be too general in, uh, in what can be done, in making his vision become a reality. Well, I just want you to know as we begin to think along those terms that our vision of the Lord's work may likewise be inadequate. We may have a vision of trying to teach as many people the gospel as possible. A noble vision on the surface, but we might be afflicted by the same shortcomings. We just don't really know how much of the gospel that we really want to teach. We may think that we're too small concerning what can be done. I, I remind you again of, of, of my, my, my good 
evangelist friend Junior Hill that preached to the mega church one Sunday morning and preached to the 30 that Sunday evening. And he prayed this prayer, Lord, I thank you that you let me preach in one of those big old mega churches. But then he went to this little small country church that night said the light bulb was hanging from the front porch, swinging. said he drove up into the driveway and wasn't nobody there at that particular time but him because nobody had got to church yet. And he said, Lord, there won't be nobody here to hear me preach tonight. said about that time, a big old blue tick hound walked up on the porch. He said, I said, Lord, is that dog saved? Maybe I can preach to him. (laughs) And said, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to his heart. And God said to him, Junior, the 34 people that go to this church are just as important to me as the 6,000 you preached to this morning. You see, sometimes for some reason, church, we get our eyes on how small we are instead of how big our God is. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Am I telling you the truth? Yes. We get our eyes on how small we are, how small a group we are instead of how big our God is. So, so we too think generally about what we should be doing, but then we just say, well, we can't do it because we're so small. Man, it thrilled my soul that we had such a small group to carry across all the way across Cook County. And we didn't have to be a small group. We could have been a lot larger group. But hey, everybody decided they didn't want to be a part of that. But that's... But hey, we carried on anyway. A small group carried across. Across Cook County. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We ought to have the same vision for trying to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our community. You see, the problem is sometimes our vision is just too general. In other words, we have no dream of what can be achieved except uh, by someone who, who dared to flesh it out. You see, you just got to flesh it out sometimes. Now listen, I'm not trying to pin any stars on on Vera or anyone else who was a part of that movement to carry the cross across Cook County. But I tell you what, I did enjoy watching her stamina as she did her best to get people interested in doing it. And I enjoyed watching you, a small group, Gordon Avenue Baptist Church, do it along with a few others from other churches. I enjoyed that because it let me see that you were willing to flesh it out. You were willing to do whatever was was necessary. You see, everybody has a plan. I plan to go to heaven. How about you? I plan to go to heaven. Hey, I, I plan to serve the Lord faithfully. What about you? I plan to serve the Lord faithfully. I plan to do evangelism. What about you? You see, evangelism is important. Sharing the message of Jesus Christ. But how do we do such things and by what means do we get the results that we want? What specifically uh, measurable actions can we take to be where we want to be for the glory of God? How much time, effort, and money will it take? All of these are good questions. Because... This is a church basically of people who work. Or people who's either working now or retired. I don't read in the Scripture where Jesus ever retired. (laughs) Went all the way to the cross and died. Now, I don't know, five or six years ago, my little precious wife retired from being an educator. But you know about what I about learned about that? Once an educator, always an educator. Because she still educates me quite regularly. But she retired. 
And I will never forget when she retired, this was her question to me. Honey, Rick, when you'll retire. You remember asking me that question? What did I tell you? When I die. <laughs> That's when I'm going to retire. When I die. As long as God gives me breath to stay healthy, I'm going to tell somebody about Jesus. I think of a good old preacher buddy of mine, Brother Roy Burdett. Brother Roy's in heaven tonight. But let me tell you something. Brother Roy had some surgery and, and, and it paralyzed him. They rolled him into a church that I was pastoring many years ago. Rolled him into that church. We moved the pulpit, rolled his little wheelchair up to where the pulpit was, and for 30 minutes, just as hard as he could go, that old man of God sat in a wheelchair and preached to us, just preached like he had never preached before. And in the nursing home, they'd roll him in front of all of those old saints of God that was placed in that home. And as hard as he could go, he preached Jesus. He didn't quit until he died. But you see, the problem with most of us, we've lost our vision. And we've already quit. Because we think we're too small a group to get too much accomplished. But let me just say this. The problem is not that we're too small to get anything done. The problem is maybe our vision's just too little. Maybe our vision's just too little. When uh, we do think specifically about the Lord's work, we often fail by setting our sights small instead of big. Now, perhaps we're hindered by our past experience. Man, if I lived by some of the things that happened to me in the past, I wouldn't be standing here today. What? Personal efforts made in the past may not have borne fruit. You ever tried to just witness and it didn't seem like you was getting anywhere? The problem is, listen, God didn't call us to get anywhere. He just said, share the word. He'll give the increase. Dennis, I think about your brother who was as good a friend as I ever had in this county. I used to sit on his porch with him. And enjoyed his fellowship. And we won't get into what we did on that porch. But all I'm going to say is, while he was doing one thing, I was doing another. And I was chunking some seed on him. And I won't ever forget the time that he stopped by my house when I lived in Tifton, right there next to Agra Supply, used to be MSI, knocked on my door. And he said, Preacher, you know all them seeds you threw on me a long time ago? I said, Yes, sir. I do, Jerry. He said, I just want to let you know they take root and I got saved. And you're not going to believe it, but I'm the church treasurer out at the church now. Whoo! Glory to God. <laughs> you see, listen. God gives the increase. Not you. And then congregational efforts just don't seem to go anywhere. We do our best to try to fill our little church up and I look out there and this side's a little bit fuller than this side and I can remember when we used to have to set chairs out in this church and why can't it be that way now? Well, hey, if I dwelled on yesterday's victories, then I have no vision for today and tomorrow's victories. Thank God for yesterday, but praise God for what He plans to do here now. Perhaps we've been fed a steady diet of defeatism, if there's such a word. <laughs> Perhaps we've been fed a steady diet of negativity. It doesn't take very much to hear negative thoughts in today's society. 
Maybe we try to get people to come into the church and people say, you know, I'm just not interested in spiritual matters anymore. And so we tell ourselves, well, we'll just be God's little remnant at Gordon Avenue Baptist Church because people are not interested anymore. Honey, they wasn't interested in Jesus' days. They weren't. If they had been interested, they wouldn't have nailed Him to the cross. With small visions, many churches and individuals seem to be content with the attitude, I'm just trying to keep the house of God going. Thank God somebody wants to keep the house of God going. But let's get past that attitude. Listen, God wants us to do more than just being housekeepers. Boy, it gets quiet when the preacher starts preaching the truths of God's Word. God wants us to be more than housekeepers. Just an occasional conversion. And usually those conversions are, are involve our children or our spouses. Now I'm going to tell you something. I enjoy seeing people get saved. And there's been very few churches that I've ever pastored that I didn't baptize at least one soul in a year's time. At least one. I thought one time I was going to have to get Marta saved again to baptize one. <laughs> I really did. But hey, we got to get busy. With limited visions, many churches have this attitude. Well, I go to church, but little is done and little is accomplished. Let me tell you about little. When we catch a vision, little is much <laughs> when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. What does a vision worthy of our Lord's work require? Brings me to my second thing that I want to bring to your attention. What are our vision needs? What are our vision needs? Listen to me. Number one, our vision needs should be that this church grows in attendance every year. Every year. We don't need to have the mentality, well, I'm kind of satisfied, preacher, with our little old church. Hey, believe me, I've been in churches that had that attitude. We need to grow in attendance every year. Now listen to me. To grow in attendance every year, we need to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in our community every year. Now listen to me. I, as a chaplain, one of the things they taught me in the chaplaincy field is you've got to be a good listener. You've got to be a good listener. You know one of the things that I've heard about this community since I've been back here? When I preach, you just got to understand that we live in a transitional community. <laughs> Any of y'all remember telling me that? Come on. Any of y'all remember saying that to your preacher? Thank God for a transitional community, so let's transition them out of the devil's kingdom into God's kingdom. Whew, hallelujah. Our vision, 
requires specific action steps. Now listen to me. To grow in attendance every year, I want to challenge you to do something for me. It worked in 1986 and I still believe that it'll work in 2017. I want you to go out, whether it be at the grocery store, when you're downtown, no matter where you may go, if you're visiting a neighbor, I want you, listen, write it down. I want you to invite at least two people a week to church. At least two. When I preach you, why two? Why not more than two? I said at least two. If you want to invite more, that'll be good. That's a goal to set for yourself. Preacher, I'm going to set a goal to invite two people to this church every week. Invite two people a week and by the end of the year, you may get at least one of them to attend church regularly. Set yourself a goal. Hey, Provide transportation. Oh, preacher, I don't believe in the bus ministry. Hey, you got a car, don't you? Some folks don't have a car. If you know somebody that can't get to church because they don't have a way to church, invite them to ride with you. Amen? Amen. Invite them to ride with you. Provide transportation to people who can't drive. Listen, how much can we value a soul? How much value can we put on a soul? You know, I know it's about time to quit, but I'm going to finish this sermon Please. if I'm the last one in the house. Please do. I'll be here. Listen, if every person succeeded in just getting one person to come regularly to attend the house of God, it would grow. Another thing you can do is pick you up some tracks somewhere. Well, preacher, I just don't know what to say. Well, pick you up a track and hand them one. Well, preacher, you know tracks are not popular anymore. Well, let me tell you something, they still work. I went to the restroom at a restaurant we stopped at the other day. You know, I ought not have told y'all that. I just told y'all my doctor's getting on me because I gained weight, and I told you when we went to the restaurant. <laughs> and I went to the restroom in this restaurant, and there in the restaurant, laying right next to the sink, was a track. You know what I did with that track? I picked it up and I read it. So somebody's still putting tracks out. And there are some people just inquisitive enough that they'll read a track. Hand out a track. Give somebody a track. If you'll do this, a congregate, listen, if we'll do this, a congregation of 50 people will present the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to at least 2,500 people a year. Set the goal. How does this compare to last year where no vision was present? we got to have vision. Our vision needs to be filled with boldness. The disciples were bold disciples. The early Christians, they were bold in their efforts to win the lost to Christ. They was always abounding and, and laboring, knowing that their labor would not be in vain. But listen, not all vision is good. And I think this is the problem that most of us have today. Most of our vision is tunnel vision. Anybody know what tunnel vision is? 
Somebody tell me what tunnel vision is. My granddaddy used to plow an old mule. I'm dating myself. <laughs> My granddaddy used to plow an old mule when I was just a little bitty boy. I remember it well. And that old mule sometimes would get a little honor and kind of get out of the way. And my granddaddy went and bought what was called some blinders. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And he put those blinders on that old mule. And all he could see was right there in front of him. And it made him walk a straight line. And granddaddy plowed a straight row because that mule had tunnel vision. You see, too many of us, we've got tunnel vision. Visions of despair, visions of negative, never positive. That's tunnel vision. But vision, but vision that has a grand scope of a worthy mission is an awesome vision. Vision for what I call the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that type of vision, that type of vision whenever we get despair and negativity out of our hearts and our mind and have a vision for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we begin to accomplish good for the kingdom's sake. We begin to build the kingdom. We begin to communicate the gospel. We begin to direct ourselves from the laziness that once engulfed us. We begin to empower, be empowered for service for the glory of God and, and we're freed from the bondage of negativity and it guides us in the way and causes us to honor God and it illuminates our thoughts and, and the list could just go on and on and on. It, it causes us to join the cause for carrying the gospel of Christ to the world and it leads the way and it motivates us for the glory of God. Now, I'm going to say this to you. Yes, this message is for the Gordon Avenue Baptist Church. But this message is for the church in general. It's time to get busy for the kingdom's sake. Somebody said, why are we having so much sin and so many bad things to happen in our country? It's because we've been walking in tunnel vision long enough. Pull off the blinders and put on Jesus. And you'll see great things happen for the glory of God. Now, stand with me if you will. Bow your heads. Father, strong message, powerful message, truthful message. While we were preparing it, I sit at my desk and said, Oh me, so many times. God, help us. Help us, Lord, to take off the blinders. Lord, help us to see the need of making a difference in our world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in His name I pray. Amen.